Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reference Point. I'm your host, Dave Cokerhook. Appreciate your being there this evening. Tonight, we're going to have a conversation about uh, the world of art, actually. And we're going to be looking at uh, drawing, painting, artwork, sculpting, various and sundry things, but specifically addressed to young people. Uh, I have with me uh, two wonderful individuals, um, Shauna Sundstrom and Jean. Sc I did this again. I just did Skarma? Scamera. 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 Jean Scamera. <laughs> eh, sorry about that. But anyway, Shauna and Jean are the owners of a, um, a hidden a, a business called Hidden Talent Art Studio here in San Jose. And you work dominantly, I believe, with, with young people, right? And so, which is really very cool because I know that in the school systems in general, the whole stuff about drawing and art and whatever has tended to take a little bit of a uh, um, sideline position in the last few years. Is that a fair statement? That is correct. Definitely due to budget cuts, uh, state, local. I think since um, really a lot of the funding has been cut um, just over the past 20, 30 years, you can see how funding in the private, um, in the schools, um, there's just not a lot of Funding, Especially in, in, the, in the public school In system, the public schools. We the thing about this that intrigues me, though, is, is that uh, not only is art activity fun, okay, but isn't there a lot of um, additional benefit that, that a student will get from, from putting attention on this type of a creative endeavor? Absolutely. There have been studies that link art education to cognitive growth as well as um, self-confidence improvement. So um, there's, there's so many benefits of arts and the education that people don't really realize, that they don't really put the emphasis of importance on. Right. It also builds up their self-confidence. It heightens aesthetic awareness. You could see um, their fine motor skills are improved. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to arts um, in education. I remember when I was little, and, and when my kids were, were very small, you know, the coloring was always the thing. I want a coloring book, and you could go to a, uh, um, a, uh, a restaurant, and they'd give you a thing to color and stuff like that. And they just kind of, they love it. They just go to town, okay? They even use walls and things, which was, uh, my wife had a challenge with every now and again. But, but, but what, what is it about this concept, or this opportunity to, to, to create, that, from your opinion, what, what is it that, that stimulates the kids? Why do they like this so much? Well, I th it's, it's a fun natural outlet. It, um, art is a very visual language for them because students are just learning to read and write. And um, so art is their, their way of telling their story. And so while they think it's fun, they don't realize they're learning all of these other developmental growth um, aspects that carry on into other subjects such as math, science, and as well as reading and writing. So you said something about there's a way for them to tell their story. I think that's really interesting. How, can you expound on that a little bit? What, Jean, maybe? Well, I think um, a lot of um, students, if you give them a piece of paper, they're just willing to go at that at the piece of paper and just tell what happened in their in their life. A lot of times when you look at kindergartners work, they'll be drawing their family, their mom, their dad, their sister, mm -hmm. their house, their pet, things that are important to them. And it's a way to tell um, what's happening in their everyday life, like how, how they feel that day. A lot of times um, art education is also used in um, therapy. Mm -hmm. It's a way to express if you're feeling sad. And some students, they just can't, they don't have the words yet uh -huh. to express express like how they're actually feeling so they can do it through art through color color um, even um, like red is such a vibrant red um, almost like an angry color in a mm -hmm, way mm -hmm. and, and if the student uses that sometimes the teacher can pick up are they feeling sad are they angry or it's a really great way to um, have them express themselves and then it builds up their confidence too I think that's real interesting. I hadn't thought of it in, the, in those terms before, but I can see when, you know, you've got, uh, it, let me step back for a second. When you engage with um, your students, what are the age ranges generally? I think our core, the core group that Jean and I work with are ages three and a half up through fifth grade. Okay. But we really try to bring art to all ages, zero through 100 plus, because, okay. you know, everybody can 
can experience art. Mm -hmm. So at that three and a half to fifth grade, the core center market, um, that's time when you're just really beginning to get a feel for some type of vocabulary. You know, right. what, how, how do you express yourself and do things? And, and, and that's a time in a young person's life when there's a lot of, uh, I'll call it acting out or, or behavior that to, to try to express because they don't have the words to say it. So w what I'm gaining from what you're saying is that the, the activity of, from an artistic perspective, being able to draw or color or sculpt or whatever, gives them an outlet for being able to communicate. Is that? Yes, yes. They're available Absolutely. to communicate to um, their parents, to their teachers, to their friends, to themselves. Mm -hmm. And then it also, I think uh, another major aspect of art is self-motivation. Being able to, um, and also being able to problem solve. Oh. Um, having um, an issue. We often, sometimes in um, Ms. Shannon's in my class, we like to say, there are no mistakes in art. Mm -hmm. um, if you draw a line that you don't like, figure out a way to cover it up, to change it into something else, to experience that problem solving where in math, it's always two plus two is always gonna be four. Right. But in, in drawing, there's always many beautiful pictures, many different ways to come up with a beautiful picture or something that makes it very pleasing to them. I've had students who have become really frustrated to the point of wanting to tear up their picture. And before I let them get to that point, I would say, wait, 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 let's just look at the picture. What don't you like about it? And they finally, you know, use their words to tell you what they don't like about it. And you say, okay, well, what if we add this? What if we do this to it? And we give them options. And so I, I have a ch child who is ready to tear up their artwork, um, change from loving their artwork at the end because they made a few simple changes and uh -huh. problem solving and getting to that point of, you know, that, and that's mm -hmm. where that, that um, self-confidence comes in. That's right. really cool. And then going <coughs> on to that, um, a lot of times the, the students, especially that, especially in this area, they're really focused on math and right. science, yeah, yeah, the core sure. subjects, which always get funded. You know, right. those are the core subjects. When the schools get funding, those are the ones that, that have that, most that of the, the money. Left brain things. Yeah. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Right, and the, the kind of the secondary subjects like theater, arts, um, dance, yes. they sometimes get, they often get put on the back burner or even right. get cut. And we're seeing it right now, especially in the elementary schools with um, the lack of funding that they're being eliminated altogether. Mm -hmm. I've been, um, I still work part time for um, a union school district here in the Bay Area. And I've been there for about seven years, and our budget is a third of what it was seven years ago. Right. But I still do the same amount of projects, the same amount of students. And it's, it's, it's sad when you look at the amount of materials that I have and, and just trying to teach the basics. She calls me up all the time, tearing her hair out. You're not going to believe what they've cut this time. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter is a fifth grade teacher in Cupertino School District, so I understand some of the issues and challenges of uh, budgeting and budget cuts and stuff like that. But I think <laughs> what, what a lot of people miss is an understanding of the interaction between some of these um, more creative components that you can do uh, and, and how that's part of the whole developmental thing. It's not just can you add, can you, you know, um, use a slide, I guess you're not, you don't use slide rules anymore. Can you use a calculator? Can mm -hmm. you run the computer? There is this whole area of, uh, of, of creative activity. I understand it from the standpoint of song because I'm a musician, I sing, okay? And it's always been something very uh, important to me and I've enjoyed and I find that it doesn't matter if I've, if I've had the crummiest day at the office when I go and sit down with the chorus and we start singing, mm -hmm. it, n nothing else matters. It all goes away. Okay. Right. There's this creative outlet. There's this opportunity to have something that you are doing that is um, uplifting. And I can see the same to be true for people who, who work with their hands in sculpting or drawing or painting or whatever. Yeah. I think I can get, I mean, I think most artists can get lost in the time. They'll sit down to do a project and then two, three, four o'clock in the morning they realize <laughs> what time it is because they've been so engaged and you almost lose yourself in it, mm -hmm. in that whole creative process. It's, it's very enjoyable. It's very fun. It's a, um, a great way to express yourself um, through color and texture and line and just get, almost sometimes just get it all out. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. if you can't with your words, you can with the paintbrush. So how do the, the young people respond? 
do you find that they are um, they they embrace what it is that you're offering them? I think so. I think um, it's just it comes very naturally to children. It's it's a natural outlet. They they're so excited to come to class. I mean, I have so many parents every week come back and say they know what day of the week it is. They know it's art day. Uh -huh. They're so excited to, to come to class and you know ask what they're going to be doing that day. What are we what are we doing today? What project are we, what do you get to draw today? Oh, very so cool. That's great. That's very, great. They're very enthusiastic about it. Now you guys have a studio in San Jose, mm -hmm. but you also um, do um, uh, teach art classes at certain schools in, in the area as well, right? So you have that opportunity to not just be in one location, but but you're you're spreading yourselves kind of thin, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we kind of are. Well, we we started in the um, in the private schools um, and. Once we got into one school, it kind of snowballed from uh -huh. there, but we're limited um, for the elementary students. So we mm -hmm. wanted to expand and be able to teach all ages because we also feel like a lot of adults um, wanted uh, want art classes. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, at the college level, once you, you can only take the class so many times and then you're not allowed to take it sure. anymore. So uh, we've noticed that why can't we have a place where um, adults can come in and have um, the same college materials available to them oh, and be cool. able to really ex expand their, their knowledge and just, just have fun with it, just experiment, really play around with it, almost be like a scientist. And has, that been, has that proved out? It, it has, oh, it fantastic. has. It's been interesting though, I'll tell you, um, adults are a lot harder, a lot challenging to teach than children. <laughs> they're a lot more apprehensive, and they're more a lot more, ideas. yes, yeah. yes, they're a lot more, um, they, they see mistakes more, they, it's harder for them to let go, but it's a great outlet, especially for the frustrated adult. I have right. um, an adult class that I teach weekly, and at the end of the class, they are just so relieved. It's almost like therapy, just uh -huh. a, a release, and it was a great way to end the night, just That's with cool. some coloring. So now how did you two come together to do <laughs> this as a team? We start. We met each other uh, working together at another art studio, and we quickly became friends. And one day, a few, you know, a few years later, decided, you know, we should do this on our own because there were, we had other ideas that we wanted to put together. And we just got to brainstorming, put together an outline, and. Um, went for it. Yeah. <laughs> One of the major um, things that we noticed was in the elementary level um, and just in general, people have um, uh, availability to craft materials, not a mm. lot of fine art materials. Right, right. And there's so much out there. And we almost wanted a place where you can come in and experience um, all, all different materials. Mm -hmm. You know, and just, and almost like college level at element, college level classes for the elementary students. And I think it really builds up uh, the elementary students' um, confidence because they get to see like, oh, we get to use Chinese ink. Well, that's something that uh -huh. usually is, is never brought into the public or private schools because it's very messy. Right. But here in, an, in a fine art class, we get to experience with that. We get to do printmaking, things that the elementary, the pri uh, public school elementary teacher will never have op options for. Their funding is so dramatically cut. Sure. They can barely afford the real any real good paper to draw on. A lot of times when we go into the, uh, even private schools and public schools, their artwork's done on computer paper in a way. Oh, right. And it makes a world of a difference. And the outcome makes a world of a difference too. And if they're just kind of creating the same craft over and over, the kids get bored with that. Sure. And then they're not gonna wanna do it. And then they're gonna have this hindrance on it's art. It's the same old thing right, over and over again. Right, right. You know, you mentioned something that I hadn't really thought about, but that is that there are so many different mediums that you can use. There are, And I right. guess each different medium can have a, uh, a unique effect in terms of whatever it is that you're trying to, to create, yeah? That's very true. Um, 
when you go to the public level, they're using more craft materials like construction paper and glue, and there's only so many things you can do with it. So we all, we like to mix a lot of media. So we'll take Chinese ink and mix it with watercolor. So what exactly is Chinese ink? I'm not familiar um, with that. It's a it's just a it's a black ink. Oh, we um, should call it India ink. In India oh, okay. ink. Well, I yep. 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 Mm -hmm. ink. Okay. 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 But basically, using either a stick or a um, one of those old school pens, you can you can draw yeah. using a popsicle stick and um, and just drawing with it. And um, we like to mix a lot of different medias, like I was saying, with chalk pastels and acrylic paints, and just seeing how those materials work together. And these are the types of materials that students don't normally get to work with in in the public schools and even private schools. Right. So, so how do you get the word out? In terms of, I mean, it, it, if if this if the kind of um, impact that you can have on a student, uh, like you're saying, from what you're telling me, not only do they have a good time doing it, mm -hmm. but they are enhancing their ability to um, to socialize. They're enhancing their ability to learn. They're enhancing mm -hmm. their ability to to handle other topical subject matter as the in their curriculum. So how do we get the word out that this is not just a frivolous little fun thing to do, but this has some core basics that are crucial to the overall development of our next generation? We need to educate. We need to educate the parents. The parents need to be really involved and in, they need to know where their funding is going in the schools. They need to be active and um, in speaking out for the arts, for the dance, for the theater, for all those secondary classes that that, that get kind of lost. Mm -hmm. We need parents to step up, go into the PTA, go into the board meetings, really speak out, because the parents are the voice of their children. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna take the community to change um, the way our funding is. And and educating the public, educating the communities, um, programs like this and just getting the word out to everybody and letting everyone understand how important art plays it's not in just their children's a fun education. you know oh fun and craft yeah. there is very there's re, there's many studies and and there's a, a wealth of knowledge on the internet on all the studies and and surveys that have done they um, California and um, elementary is really underfunded in art mm -hmm. and art education, and we need to bring that back. We need to bring the that back. The focus seems to be on uh, providing certain, um, um, ed I'll call them educational basics that uh, can propel a student to go to college because the next, I mean, that's the whole, that seems mm -hmm. to be what the system is geared for right now. There, there, there is an understanding and a recognition that um, work life has changed in our society, okay? So the technology uh, basics and, and the, uh, require certain levels of uh, understanding that you know, maybe 50 years ago, somebody didn't need to worry about that if they were working in a uh, um, uh, car factory and you're just putting a couple things together. Now, if you're working in an automobile factory, it's automated and there's all sorts of things you have mm -hmm. to deal with that require a higher level of education. And I can understand that. But it seems that we've swung the pendulum so far as to be cutting out some of this other stuff. I, I, I think it's a lack of recognition of mm -hmm the value proposition that the creative side can can bring to the whole game. Well, you know, I think what a lot of people what a lot of people don't realize is that art is everywhere. Art is all around us. Somebody designed the jacket you're wearing. Somebody designed this tablecloth. Somebody designed this these cups. So, somebody designed the the program that the cameras that are filming us right now. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's around us everywhere, so it's not just um, fine art. It's computer graphics. It's website design. It's um, car design. It's mm. everywhere. And so what we're hoping to do is educate and and build a foundation, help children build that foundation in order to build a career somewhere in the arts. May it not be fine art, but it could be another area of the sure. arts. <laughs> Now, I don't know if a, a, a thought came to me when you were saying that, Shana, and I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this question, but I'm curious to know if this phenomenon that we've been talking about, is this a U.S.-based thing 
What's, mm -hmm. is, are the Europeans as far away from the integration of art into the cultural activity as we are? Well, interesting that you brought that up. Shanna and I were just talking about that before we came here because we do notice that there is a big cultural um, significance uh, that plays in the role of art. We notice that, because um, we live in the Bay Area, we have a lot of different ethnic backgrounds that come mm -hmm. and take our classes. And there are certain ethnicities that really pay attention to um, art, and they really focus on art and you can tell the parents are really um, want to know exactly how we're teaching the class and want to know all the ins and outs and we see these questions from these parents from certain um, ethnic backgrounds mm. and it makes us wonder and then um, on how um, art is valued very high in these other countries mm -hmm. and not so much in the USA. We notice um, a lot of our students are even are not even born in the USA. They're oh, born elsewhere, come over and we're a big melting pot here in the Bay Area. Yeah. But we definitely picked up on that over the years of teaching. And I just think, in general, the U.S. has become, and maybe even this is maybe more of a Bay Area thing, very techno technological. Yeah, We're right. very into the computers. That's where our um, parents say that we're going to make the money right. and we shouldn't go into the arts. Luckily I was I had parents and grandparents who really supported the arts but that's very unusual. You know you usually hear oh I'm going to be an artist. Oh you're going to do basket weaving? What you are you going to do? You know? <laughs> right. No I mean it, it is very important and I think all their cultures <laughs> recognize that importance and somehow we need to educate our parents here that are in the states to recognize that importance. I was in, uh, uh, spent some of the, the holiday time overseas and we were in Barcelona and um, um, the architectural stuff is really mm. big over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the colors and the, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. And, and every, and it's part of the, in, in that town anyway, I don't know how it is in the rest of the, of the country, but in that city, it's just like a big thing, you know. The art, the colors, the the unusual designs and things like that, and and people are growing up with it, and it's a main source of pride mm -hmm. for the Barcelonans to Gaudi and all of that, you know, and, and his, all of his stuff is over there. So it was very interesting because I don't see that walking around here, you know, right. in the Bay Area. No. Um, I know some people that are architects, and they really get, they love what they do. And, and it's such a creative outlet, and it's a design sort of a thing. It is an artistic endeavor, but you don't think of it in those terms. Right. No, and, and I wonder why. I mean, I, always, I mean, being an artist, I always look at every time I walk outside my door, I just see art everywhere. Somebody yeah. had to create everything. But for some reason, um, the general public just doesn't recognize that. They just take it for granted almost. Ah, it's there on the shelf. It just got there. Right, yeah, we don't yeah. realize how much effort it went into that packaging. Somebody had to create the colors, the design. I've, there's so much that goes into that. I, and I think it's definitely cult, um, cultural. There's a lot of, um, I, I remember seeing this on, on TV a lot. There are these, um, uh, was, was it the uh, San Francisco Art Institute? Because they've got these courses for graphic arts and stuff like that. So, so the, the computerized utilization, uh, the graphic artwork, it, it seems to be a, um, an, in this, an industry, you know, and a growing thing. Mm -hmm. And is that, that, is that a positive huge. contribution? Definitely a huge positive. I remember when I first started, um, I took some courses at the Academy of Art, and um, when I first started, it was all about illustration and, and fine art, and it's definitely taken this direction more towards animation, architecture, um, the, the technical film industry. So I think it's a huge growing uh, area of the art so and it is definitely a money-making yeah. alongside mm -hmm. the lawyers and yeah. doctors that parents want their children but to it's come. a positive uh, thing positive. too so Absolutely. you know the the um, was it uh, three-year-olds to fifth graders that are coming to your classes are going to learn some fundamentals that could assist them if they decide they want to get into the graphic arts arena I'm, I'm guessing well this is really very very cool I, I'm uh, you know what I as a as a as a grandparent, I find this mm -hmm. to be very interesting because um, you know you think about what what's going to happen for the next generation, okay? And um, and I remember when I was uh, when I was a kid, you know, we we used to do art projects and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and everybody had a good time. You'd bring the thing home, and your mom would put it up on the 
on the refrigerator and all that sort of stuff, you know, and that sort of thing, I think still tends to happen. But what I'm learning from you is that because of the the way the educational system, especially the public educational system, has been decimated from a financial perspective, the opportunity for that is significantly less for, for kids. And I'm guessing that while they are doing something at the early grades because it consumes time, they're not really making it available for the uh, when you get further into elementary or middle school. Is that my? It is. I mean, we there are California standards for so every grade they have to have they have to learn certain standards for arts. So mm. for first grade, there's certain art standards um, for all the grades, and they uh, each student is supposed to learn these standards before they move on to the next grade. Oh, okay. Whether that happens or not is is to be seen because we notice that a lot of the teachers um, in the elementary school are a little bit apprehensive teaching art themselves because they've never oh. taken art. So what. We we've noticed the last few years is just talking to the different teachers we, we invite them to come into our classroom because sure. we always have all these oh have you tried this material with this material yet see what it could do and uh -huh. we're so excited about that material that we want the teachers to know because they could take that and bring it into their classroom oh, so we fantastic. invite them into our classroom and say come in and look and see but a lot of them say well I just don't do it I don't teach art well Technically, you have to. It's yeah. California standards. So, <laughs> what are you? What are you missing <laughs> here? Yeah. But they—they're so scared of it themselves that because they've never taken any real basic courses, yeah. that they're really afraid to teach the students. And the students pick up on that. They pick up on the fear from the oh, teacher. Oh, sure, of course. And we've they're seen very some sensitive. students in the class. Oh, well, if the teacher can't do it, I can't do it. So I guess it's just the end of that. Well, and we're trying to teach teachers. We're trying to oh, come up with great. some new... That sounds like a whole um, new... Um, yes, uh, yeah. Another adventure activity. that we're doing. But we have teacher training workshops. We've gone into the public schools and private schools and held workshops because education is power. The more you know, the better we're going to be able to teach our, our kids it's better be able to prepare them for the future so they can teach their next generation. Right. Well, this is really great. I mean, I, 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 was, I knew it was going to be an interesting mm -hmm. conversation when I asked the two of you to join me here on Reference Point. Um, but it's gotten deeper than that. And mm -hmm. I think we've touched on some things that I believe the public needs to understand because mm -hmm. the, the, what, what you, the two of you are doing is... Uh, has a potentially a much greater impact than just teaching little Johnny how to draw. Mm -hmm. And right. I think that's really phenomenal. And I mean, I applaud mm -hmm. you for that. And I hope that <laughs> some you. little thing that we're doing here tonight might contribute to that. I want to let the folks at home know that if they have any questions for Gene and Shauna, send me an email at info at referencepointtv.com so that I can get that information to them. You can find out more about their programs and things so that maybe, just maybe, if you're a teacher or if you're a parent or a grandparent or whatever, that some of this information might be useful for you and your family and, and your school. So um, yeah, this has been this has been exciting. You know, it's it's it kind of like it, it gets. I like it. You know, from from that perspective too, because as I said, as a singer, it's a whole other area mm -hmm. of of the artistic endeavor that I think is great. So. I want to thank you ladies for joining me here on Reference Point. It's been a real pleasure to have you here. We'll have to have you back again in the future time when you let me know how things have been going. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to send in those questions to info at referencepointtv.com. So ladies, thank you for joining me. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time on Reference Point.